we can see at the top of the screen that Tyson's is due to report earnings on Monday, May 9th, and we have a big green exclamation point next to the estimate, which means that there is a bullish earnings alert. And so I've dropped down this little window that tells you that the estimate trend factor in our model is very bullish. That means the analysts are raising their estimates. You can see what happened last time Tyson reported. There's an EPS with a green coloring to it. In fact, the previous time, even when they miss slightly, they guided higher, and you've had big up moves in Tyson. So here's a perfect example of the classic chicken bull. And now let's look at a classic chicken bear. We have been using Kinder Morgan as our example. Before that, it was Wynn Resorts. These stocks that we pick as our classic bears tend to underperform the market for six to 18 months. So you want to avoid them and you want to find a way to So classic shake and bear, Tiffany. High-end luxury goods, power gauge rating's been bearish for quite some time. When the stock started underperforming the market in September and the power gauge rating was bearish, you want to be looking for opportunities to buy put options. And we're looking at our relative strength sell signals up here, which work very well as an entry point for a trade that's going to last four to eight weeks. So options trades on stocks like Tiffany's can be very rewarding. They report in May and analysts are lowering their estimates. That's why we have a red exclamation point next to the earnings estimate because analysts have been lowering their estimates on Tiffany's. Now, How do you find these bullish and bearish stocks in Chaken Analytics? In Chaken Hot Lists, we have power gauge lists, and then we also have featured bulls and bears, which is what you're looking at on the screen. So we have stocks that have recently turned bullish. We call them bullish turnarounds, 31 stocks. Very few stocks have recently turned bearish. Why is that? Because the market's been in an uptrend since February 11th, over two months, virtually straight up. Anybody who's been waiting for a pullback has been disappointed because the market just hasn't pulled back. Now, another way to find bullish or bearish stocks is to use our new stock screener, which really puts you in the driver's seat. It gives you control over the stocks you're looking at. So in preparation for today's webinar, Muted. I required the power gauge rating to be bullish, and I wanted that earning surprise factor to be strong, meaning that the companies on this list had a history over the last four or five quarters of reporting better than expected earnings. I also wanted stocks that were above their 21-day average, so I know they're in a bit of an uptrend with strong money flow and relative strength. And then I looked for stocks that had a buy signal in Chaken, any one of those six buy signals over the last week. And I narrowed 3,000 stocks down to 15. Now, in the upper left-hand corner, you see the symbol OC for Owens Corning. Building supplies, home builders have been very strong. So let's take a look at what you could have done in Owens Corning, and then we'll show you an option strategy you could have employed. Well, that first green triangle in March was what we call a momentum breakout. We had another one four days later. Typically, when you get a momentum breakout, you want to wait for a sideways movement of between three and eight days before you buy the stock. So this upside momentum is sort of exhausted and you get a chance to buy the stock. In this case, you would have paid about 47. Our overbought oversold indicator actually captures that because it can get oversold on a decline in the stock or if it goes sideways for eight to 10 days. Now let's say you had bought Owens Corning at 47. What could you have done in options to bring in a little bit of income because that's that trade is working out. $51 when I took this chart this afternoon. Well, you could have written a covered call and found the appropriate covered call to write using our options play module, which is what you see on the screen right here. 
So we're now at April 18th. Options play is suggesting that if you want to generate income, call options at two dollars and thirty cents. Now the worst thing that happens is they call the stock away from you at 52, at 50, but you've gotten two dollars and thirty cents per hundred shares. This option writing strategy generates 51 percent a year annualized return just by writing an option on stock you already own. A Muted. testimonial late last week from someone who was raving to our customer support department about Jaken Analytics. A better night's sleep and impressive results. After getting hammered in August of what Jaken Analytics really offers. That is a better night's sleep and some impressive returns. Rather than swinging for the fences and striking out, I've learned to do what the system tells me and it'll enjoy my 16% return. Thanks for giving me a good night's sleep. Jim Davidson is writing covered calls. Thank you, Jim, for allowing us to use the testimonial in your picture. In the strategy I've just outlined, you bought the stock expecting that it would go up and then after it went up, you write the covered call to bring in more income and you win either way. If the stock keeps going up, now it's pretty overextended as we just saw in the chart. They'll call that stock away from you at 50, and if the stock backs off for two to three weeks, you've got that $2.30 premium in your pocket. It's great income in a stock that doesn't have a lot of dividend yield, yields 1.4%. Now, we've been looking at strong stocks like Owens Corning, Tyson Foods, strong shake in relative strength. We call that the dynamic duo. It finds big winners and losers. Superior returns come from stocks that outperform the market. However, relative strength, as we'll see in a minute, stands alone as a bullish or bearish indicator. Those are what's known as momentum stocks. If they're not supported by a bullish or bearish power gauge, then you're on your own, but you can make some very, very impressive moves, as we'll see in stocks like that. So here's an example of the dynamic duo on the upside. First solar, premier blue chip in the solar energy group. Starting in late September, the stock saw its power gauge rating turn bullish, and in mid-October, it started outperforming the market. The stock muted. It was a pretty volatile ride on the way to 73 because solar energy stocks are volatile. But check and money flow was very positive, and the stock made a new high as recently as three and a half weeks ago with strong recommendations from firms like Goldman Sachs looking for $100. Now, why is this stock down right now from that peak? The reason is one of the oddities of Wall Street. Out of the blue, the company announced at their analyst day ahead of the a month ahead of the earnings in May that they weren't comfortable giving guidance for 2017. Well, if there's one thing Wall Street hates, it's uncertainty. Now, they may very well, when they report earnings on May 5th, clarify things, and you may see the stock pop right up again into the low to mid-70s. In fact, analysts keep raising their estimates on First Solar. But the bottom line is the picture has changed. It's no longer got a bullish rating. It's underperforming the market. Institutions are selling the stock, although it appears to have found a home here at 60. So you had a nice ride from $50 to 72. At some point here, you, as I said last week on a webinar, you've got to use rallies to take your profits and protect your capital. Now, the flip side of the solar energy picture is a company called Sun Edison. And we've been featuring this on webinars for the last six months or longer. Power gauge rating on Sun Edison went bearish in mid-July at a price of about 28. 
It started underperforming the market at a price of about 24. And many, many brokerage firms and hedge funds were bullish on this stock, including Merrill Lynch and Bill Ackman. And yet the power gauge and the check and money flow and the relative performance to the market were all you needed to know to avoid Sun Edison. We said on webinars as far back as November that this company was likely to go bankrupt. Why? Because it looked like another Enron. Now, do you have to know that? Do you have to know that they're moving receivables off their balance sheet to related companies? No, the power gauge synthesizes all of that because the analysts know that. And sure enough, the stock has been a disaster. The dynamic duo of relative strength and the Chaikin power gauge has been weak. Merrill Lynch finally put out a sell recommendation on this stock two months ago at $3 a share after recommending it in the high 20s. If you use this methodology, the dynamic duo, you'll avoid these and you'll be able to buy put options on these signals like the money flow sell that we have up here. Now, we got a testimonial from someone who said, if I had Chaikin, I bought Sun Edison, Chaikin rated it poorly, and it went down. If I had Chaikin then, I would have bought First Solar instead. Thank you, Rich. That's March 1st, as the stock was on its way to 73, making a new high. That's the difference between that graph of 2015, where the very bearish stocks were down 17%, and the very bullish stocks were down only 1%. Now, here's an example of relative strength standing alone. ServiceNow is one of those cloud computing big data stocks. Power gauge rating doesn't like it. Why? Because the company has no earnings. They have a billion dollars in revenue, a $10 billion market cap, but no earnings, no dividend. But there comes a time when Wall Street gets mesmerized. And in this case, they got mesmerized between mid-October and late December, and the stock went up and made a big new high, rallying from 65 all the way to 90. And I've circled the relative strength, which is green, but in late December, the stock started to reverse back to the downside. Power gauge turns bearish, relative performance turns bearish, and we get a money flow sell signal where at about 75. And then the company reports a disappointing quarter in late January, and it drops from 75 all the way to 45. This is how powerful that combination can be, and we're going to show you at the end of the webinar how to use options play to find put options on stocks like ServiceNow. Now, ServiceNow had a personality change when it went from outperforming the market to underperforming the market, and that's really the key to making big profits, and preserving your capital. You want to be on the right side of that door when Jack Nicholson is coming through with the ax. You don't want to be there. You want to be far away from there. So here are a couple examples of personality changes. One of them is Amazon. Now, Amazon was a pure momentum play, somewhat like ServiceNow. No earnings if you view gap accounting as the right way to report. Lots of revenue, but still not profitable. Now, Chaikin pointed that out because the relative strength was strong. So if you're a momentum trader and you want to buy options on Amazon, when it's outperforming the market with a neutral power gauge, you want to be thinking call options, but we don't encourage that. Be mindful that if you do that, you're on a high wire without a safety net. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's look at how Amazon made its peak. It made its final high in December, and look at shake and money flow. Remember that chart of the spider that we started the webinar off with? When the S&P 500 ETF, SPY, made its low on February 11th, shake and money flow was green, not red. It should have been red, because money flow oscillates. Reverse that. Amazon makes a new high. Look at all the money flow that had been coming into it as it made its previous peak. Big institutional buying. When it made its final high in mid-December, just under 700, money flow was red. There was your tip-off that the institutions were exhausted and taking profits in Amazon. 
Now follow the progression. Power gauge turns bearish in early January. Stock is trading around 600. It's still outperforming the market. In late January, you get a bearish personality change. It goes from outperforming to underperforming. We got a money flow sell signal the day before Amazon was due to report earnings in late January. Earnings were a disappointment. Interestingly, the stock rallied to 635 in the hours before they reported after the close a disappointing quarter. The stock turned around and sold down from 635 almost immediately to 561. In our weekly Market Insights newsletter that comes bundled with Chaikin Analytics, we had recommended buying put options on Amazon ahead of Thursday's earnings report. On January 23rd, the earnings were due out five days later, four days later. Amazon rallied above 610, which is where we thought put options should be purchased, peaked at 635, and then sold all the way down to 475. Fabulous put trade. We've captured that earnings surprise here on CNBC for posterity, and we're going to use this as the perfect example of a stock that is a pure momentum play, bearish power gauge rating, underperforming the market, likely to disappoint, as we'll see at the end of the webinar. We got this testimonial. I'm up over $17,000 in two weeks. You changed my life. Just with my options trades on Google, Amazon, and Priceline, all from checking the check and power gauge rating, and I've only been a subscriber for less than two weeks. Harry Stone is on this webinar. Harry, thank you very much. I hope we haven't overused your testimonial, but and hope that you're still profiting from check and analytics now two months later. Now, here's another stock that had a personality change. It's all the way on the left side of the chart. Twitter had been outperforming the market. Now, in this case, bearish earnings surprise came out of the blue. Stock sold down from 52 to 38 and then went sideways for about three months. Power gauge was bearish. Twitter was underperforming the market. And look at that shake in money flow. The institutions couldn't sell this stock quickly enough. So every time you got a money flow sell signal, having just had a bearish personality change with everything lined up in a negative way, you want to look to buy put options. And where we show that red arrow is a December webinar that we did where Twitter had just triggered a money flow sell signal. And we featured the options play strategy that I created that day to take advantage of that sell signal in Twitter, knowing that the power gauge, the relative strength, and the money flow were bearish. Remember, this is back in December. Twitter was 22. The strategy was a vertical put spread. Buy the 22 and a half put, which was just slightly in the money. Sell the January 18 and a half put. Your cost on that was $135. That option ultimately saw the stock break below 18 and a half by January 5th, and you could have sold that option for $500, making a profit of 200%. That's the power of combining the Chaikin credentials, as my colleague John Schlitz like to call them, with the options play module that helps you find an option strategy that suits your point of view. Remember we talked about having a directional edge. The power gauge rating, the money flow, the relative strength give you your find the best option strategy using options play which is integrated into Chaikin Analytics. So let's talk about playing good defense because it's been well documented that it's the stocks you don't own that matter. Now, what do we mean by that? If you can eliminate one or two stocks every year from your portfolio, 
that are going to fall into that bottom bucket of very bearish power gauge ratings that are going to be down 17% in a year like 2015, you're going to improve your portfolio. If you buy puts on those stocks, you're turning lemons into lemonade. That was one of our promises for today's webinar. So let's look at one of the other features of Chaikin Analytics and how I use it to find ideas. We rolled out a new sector and industry group view. You can look at the nine select spider sector ETFs. That tells you what the large cap sectors in the S&P are doing. Or in this case, I looked at what they call subsector, which are really industry groups. And I sorted them by how the power bar changed in the last week. You can see the weekly performance in the chart on the right. All the stocks, capital markets, banking, regional banking, healthcare, and retail saw their power gauge ratings improve, and they were the big winners last week. Retail uh, ETF, the XRT, was up 4%. So how do you use that information to find a stock or an options trade? Well, here's the XRT. That's the ETF that we're looking at. It bounced very sharply on Thursday and Friday last week. It had been accumulating good money flow. It's broken its downtrend line. And so you want to try and find good ideas in the retail sector. Now what you want to avoid are the stocks in the retail sector that still are under pressure like Nordstrom. Nordstrom back in July and August was a perfect stock to sell. The power gauge was bearish. It was underperforming. And check and money flow stayed negative for over five months. We call that persistency of money flow. In this case, it's negative. So every one of those reversal sell signals was a great opportunity to buy puts. Now, do you want to use Nordstrom to play the upside potential in the retail sector or group? No. What you want to look at is a stock like Urban Outfitters, which I made my bullish stock of the week in Check and Market Insights this past Sunday. Now, why did I do that? Urban Outfitters, based here in Philadelphia, so it's a stock I follow, looked a lot like Nordstrom's. Gave sell signals back in September and October in the 28 area. Stock ultimately bottomed out just under 20. But look what happened. Institutions started buying the stock. There's a turnaround in progress. Urban Outfitters started outperforming the market in mid-February, and then the power gauge rating turned bullish in late March after a positive earnings surprise where the company said, our margins are improving, year-over-year -year sales are going to be up. That reverses a big downtrend. And I saw a relative strength buy signal in Chaikin Analytics, so I made that my bullish stock of the week. This is the process that I go through to find stock and options candidates. Now, another stock where you could have played good defense was Chipotle. Power gauge rating was bearish in July. The stock went up just like ServiceNow and made a new high. Exactly the same three months of outperformance. But again, you're on a high wire without a safety net. Why? Because Chipotle was one of the most expensive fast food restaurant stocks. And in mid-October, the power gauge went bearish. This is before the E. coli epidemic that the company had to deal with because their earnings were weak when they reported back in October. And then the stock started underperforming the market. So you want to be looking for put options to profit from the weakness in Chipotle. Now, in early March, we made Chipotle our bearish stock of the week, and I featured the options play strategy on the left when the stock was 466, using a vertical put spread, buying the 470 put, which was slightly in the money, selling the May 400 put, you paid $2,180. So you're controlling $46,000 worth of stock at that point for about two months for $2,100.
Now, a week ago when Chipotle was 439 down 5.5%, that spread had widened out so that you would have had a 50% profit. That's what you're seeing on the right. Did a webinar a week ago, featured that. The stock rallied up to 455 and it's coming back down again. Uh, it was down $5 today when I pulled this slide. So there's where it all comes together. Power gauge ratings bearish. Stocks in a downtrend underperforming the market. Find a good put option trade when you see a sell signal in Chaikin Analytics and you've got the wind at your back and you've got that directional edge. Now the real power of Chaikin Analytics is during earnings season. When you can combine options ideas with earnings reports. So earnings season is typically every every uh, three months, January, April, July, and October for companies that are on a calendar year. And there's a lot of volatility during earnings season. Now, some people won't trade stocks because of that during earnings season. I think that's a mistake. Uh, you're missing out on a great opportunity. There's a lot of speculation in the media around earnings. If you were watching CNBC today, they were fixated on Netflix and whether they were going to report better or worse comps. And on Fast Money Halftime Report, they polled all four of the analysts on there about whether they would buy Netflix ahead of this evening's earnings report. And to a man, they said no. Now, you can follow what you hear on CNBC, or you can look at the power gauge rating and the relative strength to decide whether a company is likely to meet expectations or disappoint. And particularly with bearish rated stocks, if you think that they're likely to disappoint because there's been a pattern of that and the power gauge is bearish, you can find winning options trades in options play. Like LinkedIn, where the power gauge was bearish in late January, we had a reversal sell signal two days ahead of earnings. The company actually beat estimates by a penny or two, but guidance is so critical. What is guidance? It's companies telling you where they think their business is headed over the next quarter, next six months, next year. Very negative guidance on LinkedIn. It hasn't really come out of that, and it won't till the next earnings report in May. They report late April, April 28th. The stock dropped 100 points. Imagine the profits if you followed that signal with weak money flow, relative strength, and a bearish power gauge rating. Tableau Software on the same day that LinkedIn reported, symbol DATA, exact same thing. In this case, it was a bearish earnings surprise. The stock dropped 50%, same as LinkedIn, which dropped from 200 to 100. Tableau dropped from 80 all the way down to 39. So these opportunities are there for you. Tableau is going to report on May 5th. Watch this stock. Put it in a watch list and monitor it as it heads into that earnings report. Now, Netflix is our poster child for how Chaikin can help you make money during earnings season. This chart goes back to October of 2014. Before Netflix split seven for one, it was trading at 460 with an overbought sell signal. All these signals are explained on our website. That came a week before earnings. Earnings and guidance were disappointing. The stock dropped more than 100 points. People who bought out-of-the-money puts made over 50 times on their investment in one day. I call that a binary event. You either win big or you lose what you put up. And we got this testimonial from someone who's a little saner and he bought options that were closer to the money. Decided to add Chaikin Analytics to my resources using the upcoming earnings ideas in Chaikin. Netflix had a bearish rating. I bought three put contracts before earnings. This is now 2014. On 10-15, a 22, and sold them the day after earnings for a quick $21,500 profit. Now let's look at Netflix today heading into the earnings that were released after the close. Now how do we know that they're released after the close? Well, our earnings module shows you that right on top of the chart. 
Netflix was due to report earnings after the close. The estimate was three cents. And I drill down to show you the additional detail that we give you. Now, the last time Netflix reported earnings was back in January. We had had a sell signal. They reported earnings that were actually a few pennies better than expected, but they guided lower. And the stock dropped from 105 all the way to 80. It dropped almost 30%. Now, what was going on today as we headed into this evening's earnings report? Well, the power gauge rating had actually turned neutral because the stock went above its long-term trend line. But we knew it had been bearish. It had been underperforming the market. It was trading at 108, down 3%, and a strong up day in the market. Well, Netflix actually beat estimates by $0.03. Cents, but they guided significantly lower in terms of customer acquisition and customer retention. Netflix is between a rock and a hard place. They're creating original content, great shows like House of Cards, but Amazon is now getting into that game. They're losing customers here. They're raising prices. They're trying to recapture that in Europe. It's not working. So. In preparation for tonight's webinar, under the assumption that Netflix was going to report a negative earnings surprise or guide lower, I used options play to find a bearish put spread in Chaken Analytics. In this case, options play suggested buying the 105 put and selling the April 22nd 90 put against that. Now, why did I choose April 22nd? Because this is what's known as a binary event. Netflix is either going to report very positive numbers or, in the alternative, as they did after the close today, disappoint in terms of guidance. So right now, Netflix is trading at about 96 in post-market trading. Analysts will pour over their statements, but the bottom line is this vertical put spread is looking very promising. Paid $381 to control $10,000 worth of Netflix. You've got a whole week to go. If the analysts construe these subscriber trends as I do, as bearish, they'll start lowering their estimates, putting out sell recommendations, and this put spread will widen from 381 to 15 yielding a very profitable trade. Now, what if Netflix had reported a good quarter? Well, you'll probably lose most of that $381. But because the power gauge had been bearish and the company had sold off sharply the last time they reported earnings, this looked like a high probability trade. Now, how do you find other trades using Chaken Analytics? Well, we have a hot list called Upcoming Earnings Ideas. It's updated every Sunday. It shows you the stocks with bullish or bearish power gauge ratings that are due to report earnings in the coming week. Now, in this case, there were 70 of them. That's a lot of stocks to follow. You can do it in Chaik and look at charts very quickly. But I then use the screener to narrow that list down. And I'm looking for bearish stocks like Netflix because I like the potential for put option profits very quickly if a company disappoints. So I looked at all the stocks within Chaken, all 5,000 of them that passed certain liquidity requirements and had options. Required that the Chaken power gauge rating be bearish and that earnings surprise factor was weak, meaning the company had a history of negative earnings surprises and due to report earnings this week. 13 stocks to look at. I looked through those 13 charts and I saw IMAX, who makes those big screen movie extravaganzas, and I saw that this stock had a bearish power gauge rating, had been underperforming the market since late December, and couldn't, in this big rally since February 11th, get into an uptrend, could not get above our long-term trend line, double smooth 200-day exponential average. So I then went to options play to see if there was a put options trade ahead of Thursday's earnings report. 
and options play liked the vertical put spread. Options play tends to like higher probability trades. In this case, that vertical put spread buying the May 20, 33 strike price put, which is 50 cents in the money, and selling the 29 put against it. Now, how does that put become profitable? Well, if IMAX disappoints, as it did back in February, when it dropped 20%, this stock could trade from 32 all the way down again to 26, which would make this put spread extremely profitable. The put spread would widen from 125 to 4. Now, if you really think that's going to happen based on Chaikin, you can buy the put outright and see it go from 1.6 to $6, which is a higher return but with slightly higher risk. This is how you integrate options play, the power gauge rating, the earnings information to find profitable ideas. Now, Chaikin Analytics includes stock screener, options play, and earnings alerts in these new sector and industry group views. And by the end of May, a power gauge rating on ETFs. We got this testimonial when we incorporated options and screeners back in November of 15. I'm writing to tell you how absolutely incredible Chaikin Analytics has become. Thank you for making my life easier. It was good before, but with options and screener additions, I feel it's absolutely the best product on the market. And I feel the same way, which is why I fight through technical glitches to try and teach you what I know about the markets and how to use Chaikin Analytics to make money. So Chaikin Analytics for iPad and desktop is normally $1,950 for an annual subscription. As a webinar special, we're reducing the price to $1,750. Go to ChaikinAnalytics.com backslash options. This offer expires Thursday, April 21st. You can also Email sales at shakenanalytics.com, but if you go to that web address, you'll see the offer fully populated with that $200 discount. Now, what do you get with Shaken Analytics in addition to everything you've seen in today's presentation? Well, you get to turbocharge your profits because there's a lot of added value. You get my weekly market insights newsletter. So you find out what our bullish stock of the, or bearish stock of the week is. In this case, it was Urban Outfitters. You get small group tutorial. Joe Bacella and Michelle will help you get up to speed on the features within Chaikin. That's why we get so many testimonials from people who have only been using Chaikin Analytics for a couple of weeks because we help you get up and running. Education and your success is very important to us. You get the stock screener, the options alerts, the earnings alerts integrated into Chaikin Analytics, and my colleague John Schlitz, who's one of the best technicians I've ever known, writes a daily morning insights so you don't have to be watching CNBC for hours on end to find out what's going on in the futures market, what happened in China or Europe overnight. John summarizes all of that for you, tells you where he thinks the market's going, and has a bullish or bearish stock recommendation every day. So one final testimonial, 10x return in five days. In the five days that I've been using Chaikin Analytics, I've paid for the subscription over tenfold. These initial results are nothing short of astounding. Please extend my thanks to the entire Chaikin team. And we're really talking about a team effort here. So one final inducement to subscribe to Chaikin Analytics, we've got a fast action bonus. If you subscribe by midnight tonight, we'll take an additional $100 off the price of Chaikin Analytics annual subscription, reducing it to only $1,650. And for the first seven people who call tonight, you'll get a one-on-one -on -one telephone call with me after you've gotten your onboarding session. We want to make this as valuable as possible for you. So $1,650 and a one-on-one -on -one phone call, we can discuss anything you like except specific recommendations, which we can't and won't make. Anything about 
your trading style, what's been working for you, what's not working, how to use Chaikin to improve your results. It's all fair game. I've enjoyed it. Our subscribers have, who've taken us up on the special offer have enjoyed it. So ChaikinAnalytics.com backslash options. Go there. It's only $1,650 and start reaping the benefits of Chaikin Analytics and our options play module with four weeks to go during earnings season. As you saw with Netflix, we always go out on a limb. Sometimes we're wrong. More often than not, we're right. Of a stock that's due to report right after we start the webinar. Subscribe today and take advantage of the next four and a half weeks of earnings season because there'll be more opportunities like Netflix coming up. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for putting up with the technical glitches, turn it back to Joe Bacello, who's going to wind down the webinar. Unmuted. Watch. All right. We'll see. One more technical check. Let's say if everybody can hear me. <laughs> uh, well, I, we definitely want to thank everybody for uh, sticking around. I know we. Uh, um, it's a lot of pros and cons when it comes to uh, hosting a webinar, but we definitely want to thank you so much for sticking around. Um, I know we've got questions throughout the entire session. Will this be recorded? And uh, yes, it has been recorded. So look out for a recording tomorrow morning. We're going to email it to everybody. Um, but in the meantime, Mark has a great offer for you, 1650 uh, That is a one-time payment for a full year to Chaken Analytics. Um, on top of Mark's options content, of course, for our subscribers, we have a whole series of weekly webinars that we host. Um, and Tuesdays and Thursdays, emphasis on tomorrow, uh, we'll be hosting our options session where we're going to take you through that full options play program that Mark showed you. Um, it's a great opportunity to go through how to model out an options strategy after you found the right stock within Chaken Analytics. So. If you register, uh, there's no better way to do it than with Mark's uh, um, fast action bonus here. Um, if you do take advantage of that, then we will be able to see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock for our options session. We'll get you walked through, get you up to speed as quickly as possible, and then we'll have your testimony available for Mark's next webinar for uh, after uh, paying off your subscription. So with that said, have a great afternoon again. Thank you so much for sticking around. I'm glad you did. I hope you found some very valuable content. I know for sure you're seeing uh, Netflix uh, being a gift that keeps on giving. So uh, with that said, have a great afternoon and we'll see you tomorrow.